Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today on the channel, we are gonna be making pepper spray. Stuff you can use on the bad guys after the proverbial shizzy hits the fizzy. Let's get to it. A few moments later. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> so, People might ask, why pepper spray? Don't you just need your AR-15, your shoddy, your pistol, your rifle? Well, let's just say theoretically, okay? Let's say you, theoretically you might live in a country where you can't even get this stuff, never mind SHTF. There's a way you can make it. Most of this stuff comes from nature, believe it or not. And nature does provide the main ingredients that you're gonna need to make your pepper spray. So if the ammo runs out, you're gonna have a backup plan. Now, as important as the pepper spray itself is going to be the mechanism of dispersal. So today we're just gonna put it in this manual pressurized pump. This is gonna allow for a continuous blast of the pepper spray. Or you could get yourself a little bottle like this, simple spray bottle. It's not gonna work that well, it's not gonna go that far. When this stuff sprays out, usually dispenses a fairly wide cone, about 15 to 20 feet. Now you can make something like that if you want to. You simply get yourself an old aerosolized canister, drill into the bottom of the canister, and you can install a nozzle on the bottom, which you're gonna use to push compressed air into there. That's gonna give you that nonstop aerosolized spray. So as a disclaimer, obviously, be safe. One of the key things to keep in mind with pepper spray is that if you do make something like this, and you spray it anywhere, you get it in your hands, you get it on your t-shirt, you need to wash all your clothes, you need to make sure you wash your hands because all it takes is a little bit of residue, you get that in your eye. You're gonna have a bad time. For obvious reasons, you never wanna spray pepper spray upwind because it can come back at you and neutralize you and that it will. This is part of the limitation with using pepper spray. If you are using something like this in close quarters, it's gonna contaminate the space that you use it in. And uh, the closer the quarters, the worse it's gonna be for you. Even though the majority of this is hopefully going to land on the intruder or the bad guy. So as you can see here, I have some dog spray. This is 0.5% capsicum. Some people call it capsaicin. Some people call it capsaicin. Uh, I'm just gonna call it capsaicin for simplicity's sake. And these ones here, this bear spray has about 1% capsaicin. The minimum capsaicin you need in bear spray is 1%. Now, most pepper sprays can go up to 3%. Some of the stuff the police use even goes over 2%, which is obviously going to be a, a very major irritant for human beings. For bears and dogs, obviously they're gonna have more scent receptors, so the idea is that they're going to be more easily agitated by something like this. Now, I can tell you that this absolutely does work. It, it undoubtedly works, otherwise uh, riot police would never use it. And it's pretty evident that it works when you're using the real deal stuff. But if you can't access the real deal stuff, a lot of people will try to make this out of things like chili powder, uh, cayenne pepper, things like that. The only problem with that is, is that it's not gonna be nearly potent enough to have the immediate effect that you might want if you're dealing with somebody or an animal which is very aggressive. This stuff can take up to 10 seconds to kick in, I would say. For most people, it's gonna kick in a bit sooner than that, especially if you get it right in your eyes. And once it's kicked in, it's basically gonna be kicked in for a significant amount of time until that person can wash their eyes out with milk or some sort of fat soluble liquid. So you can buy this stuff off the shelf, no problem. In some countries it's regulated. In Canada, you can only use this on wildlife. You cannot legally use this against human beings. It is considered a prohibited weapon. So don't use it on humans. That's why it is marketed for dogs, coyotes, and bears. Okay, so there's this thing called the Scoville unit scale. It's a way that they determine how hot something is. So to give you some perspective, most chili powders that a lot of people use in their homemade pepper sprays are around 1,000 Scoville units, okay? This cayenne pepper supposedly is around 30,000 Scoville units, but don't quote me on that. The jalapeno peppers 
that a lot of people find really hot and unbearable are actually around 8,000 Scoville units. So less than the cayenne pepper. Now you can also buy this stuff, pure evil capsaicin drops, 13 million Scoville units. 13 million, that's pretty serious. And I'm gonna show you the size of this, okay? This is what you get if you order some pure evil. This is what pure capsaicin looks like. Okay, so you could mix a few drops of this in with some water and you'd have yourself a pretty potent pepper spray type solution. Now, for perspective, this ghost pepper is about 1 million Scoville units and the Reaper peppers are about 2.2 million Scoville units. So about 275 times more potent than a jalapeno pepper. That's what we're gonna be using in our mixture. Because let's be honest, if there's a really large aggressive person who's coming at you, you don't wanna be relying on chili powder based pepper spray. You wanna get the most potent possible version you can get. So what you would have to do, you would have to grow your own peppers, dry them out, mulch them all up somehow, and basically try to distill or extract the capsaicin from those peppers and use that as the base of your pepper spray. There's a thousand different ways you can do this. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll try to use an alcohol-based solution like this uh, rubbing alcohol in order to extract the capsaicin from the peppers. We're not really gonna bother with that because our peppers are hot enough that all we're gonna do is we're gonna grind them all up in a blender. We're gonna filter out the solution. We're gonna add a bit of oil. The oil is gonna help the solution adhere to something. So it's not just gonna evaporate right away or a person's not gonna be able to quickly wipe it off. Don't try any of this at home because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Stupid. So for this experiment, I think what I'm gonna do, maybe I'll start out without the safety glasses and the half face respirator, but I think eventually I'm gonna have to bust them out. All right. Whoa. If you guys ever seen my one chip challenge, then uh, you'll know my experience with the Carolina Reaper pepper. This isn't very scientific guys. This is all we're gonna do, okay? We're just gonna drop that in there just like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour some alcohol in there. The real deal, baby. Now what most people will do is they will blend this up and uh, you know what, I think we need a little bit more. I'm not content with just this small amount. Let's, uh, let's throw some ghost peppers in there as well. That's the devil right there. And I think we're gonna get a little bit more rubbing alcohol. Enough hot peppers, probably if you ingested that, you would definitely be in the hospital. <laughs> Pretty mulched up. Any of you communists want a drink? <laughs> All right. The moment of truth. Hopefully I don't pass out when I smell this and spill it all over myself. Oof. <coughs> mm. <coughs> oh! <coughs> That's gonna work. I'm still not satisfied though, I must say. I'm still not satisfied. <coughs> But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put this on just because. All right, we're just gonna do that just to be safe. They say you're supposed to add a little bit of oil. Every recipe you see online is gonna be different. This thing is an endless turning lid. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that in there. I think you're probably supposed to do that after you filter it out, but who the hell cares? I'm just gonna go straight in just like that. Get all the, the big stuff out. So that's what we're left with there at the bottom. What some people are gonna do at this point is they're gonna mix alcohol with this and they're gonna let it sit overnight, let all the alcohol evaporate. And then what you're essentially gonna be left with is this pure capsaicin. So as long as I'm not breathing it directly, it should be all right. Of course, now that I say that, Shit's probably gonna hit the fan. Let's add some more. We're going Tim the Toolman Taylor style here. No Al Borland plaid shirt communists around here. Let's even throw some cayenne pepper in there just, just to prepare a nice meal for our marauders that we're gonna be 
mala tossing after the shizzy hits the fizzy. Some of that, put some alcohol in there. If you ever wanted to uh, torture your enemies, just make them drink some of that. Now, I just wanna have a little taste here. See what that tastes like. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Flashbacks to the hot pepper. All right, we're gonna try to get through the rest of this video now. It takes a few seconds to kick in, but holy shit, when it kicks in, man. And it stays. This one has a nicer color to it because of that cayenne pepper. I don't know why I'm tempted to do this, but I'm gonna have another whiff. Must be some kind of masochist. Oh, 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 even worse. Hopefully this is gonna be big enough. Of course, I spill it on the table. There's still too many little specks in there. I don't want clogging up our spray container. And my mouth is still burning from that one little tiny drop that I put on my tongue. I cannot imagine what it's gonna be like to have this stuff sprayed in your eyes. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll try it like this and I'll get it all over my hand, rub my eyes, and you guys will have to take me to the hospital. Oh, f look at that. This is how you not do it, guys. All right, this is why you don't buy a cheap, uh, what is this thing called? A carafe? There's actually a name for this thing and it's called a carafe. Oh, a measuring okay. cup. A measuring yeah, cup. Say, measuring carafe. Measuring cup I thought it was too? a coffee. Uh... Oh. This one sucks because it doesn't even have a proper spout. So it's spilling all over the table and the staff have to eat off this table. Okay, this is stupid. This ain't working. In the bottom there, there's just a bunch of like really fine, fine powder. And I'm sure if we um, used alcohol to extract that, that would actually be some really pure capsaicin, but ain't nobody got time for that. Maybe you can uh, splice that into the video. Ain't nobody got time for that. And this coffee filter ain't working too well. And perhaps this is why I only see people make this in very small batches because they don't want to stand here while the cameras are rolling in 4K, sucking up our memory card space. It's easy to forget that one little speck of this will incapacitate a person and I'm spilling it all over the table. Another thing you could do is add lemon juice. I've seen people add um, garlic powder, salt. These are all gonna be irritants. And if you look at pepper spray, it looks like this. It looks, it has that, what would you say, like a reddish brown kind of color to it. And pepper spray, when you aerosolize it properly, I just got it on my fingers, big mistake. It gets everywhere and you can, you can breathe it. With this, because it's not vaporized, I can be around this right now. It's not a huge deal. But if uh, there was any sort of spraying going on, this would not be good. So we've uh, ran that sludge through another thing of water and we got this really, really hot spaghetti sauce here. This is probably the hottest spaghetti sauce on earth. So if anybody wants, I can send them some and you can tell me how it tastes. Pure Colombian, man. These coffee filters are working too good. You know, cheesecloth might have worked a bit better because cheesecloth is uh, not as tight of a filtration. All right, we're gonna toss the rest of this in here. A little bit more out of there. Extremely potent capsaicin and impatience don't mix. Got it all over my hands already, so who the f cares? Oh, yeah. Vaporizes it when you <coughs> it definitely works. You guys don't need me to spray this in my eyes. If you care about me, please, please don't vote yes. Spray this in your eyes. As you can see, you wanna make sure you handle this stuff with care. You don't wanna spill any anywhere. You're not rolling, are you? Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I lick this table, let's just see what would happen. hot. This is the end result. This is what we got. We got about that much more than it probably looks like because this is the large container, but here's what we got. It looks pretty pure. It's a little bit of chunk though in the bottom. So might have to give her one more filter. This stuff sneaks up on you. I've got to do one more test because this is going to be the final solution. Oh, God, I dread this. The things we do for videos.
Oh! Ah! It takes a while, but it hits you. I barely even had like a tiny little smidgen of a drop that time. It took about 10 seconds. The thing with these Carolina Reaper peppers, man, they don't hit you right away, but they stick. They last a long time. I couldn't imagine getting sprayed in the face with this. That would just be, that would be painful. So now the trick is getting it back into the bottle. Try to separate a little bit more here. That would cause Marauders to have a bad day. A little bit more gunk in the bottom. All right, I'd say we're ready to go. Because it's so potent, I'm thinking I could probably dilute it with some water just to give it a bit more volume. And that way be a better spray test. But I think we should also add a bit more oil so it actually sticks. There's a lot of different recipes. Some people say add lots of oil, like one teaspoon for every teaspoon of alcohol. Some say, you know, half that amount. Again, this is overkill to go to the lengths that we did with these ghost peppers and Carolina Reaper peppers. I'm gonna make you guys a deal. I got two bags left, okay? The first people who place an order at CanadianPreparedness.com, you are gonna get one of these in your order. After I release this video, after the 10 minutes it takes to watch the video, the first two orders that come through, let me know if you guys have any tips and tricks on how to improve this recipe. And if you really want me, if you really, really want me to get sprayed by the Bolshevik cameraman and his comrades, if we hit a million subs in three months, I gotta take one for the team. I will let them spray me with this mixture right here. I may well end up in the hospital. I may end up with permanent eye damage, but if I can get a million subs in three months, you heard it here first. Committing to something like this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done, but it is what it is. It has to be done. This is for science. This is for prepping for when the shizzy hits the fizzy. This is something that we gotta do. We gotta test ourselves. Thanks for watching guys. I need to go and vomit. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.